All right, this video is going to walk you through how to simplify radicals. The first part you have to understand is the basics. When you do a square root of 9 on your calculator or know in your head, you're asking yourself what number times itself equals 9. You already know the square root of 9 is going to equal 3. Now, you can also what you may not know about radicals is you can break them apart. You can take a square root of 9 and think to yourself, what two numbers multiply to give you 9? Well, the square root of 3 and the square root of 3. So if I have the square root of 3 and the square root of 3, which you hopefully notice are matching the exact same number, that the answer is going to equal 3. Okay? Now, <clears throat> think to yourself about the square root of 25. You already know in your head probably what the square root of 25 is, that it's 5. But when you break 25 apart into two numbers that can multiply to give you 25, which is 5 and 5, that's a matching pair of 5s. Whenever you have a matching pair of 5s, the square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is the square root of 25, and we already know that answer is supposed to equal 5 also. What I hope you're catching on to, though, is that when you have the square roots of the same exact numbers in both square root symbols, that the answer will be whatever that value is as the answer. So as you look at the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, we already know that that's a matching pair of 2s, so therefore it's going to equal 2. If you have a matching pair of square root of 7s, that that's going to equal 7. If you can understand this thinking of matching square root numbers or values, when you circle them, you get the answer of what they equal. Uh, this reducing of radicals is going to be very easy. Let's do that next. All right, so to keep things simple, I'm, just gonna, I'm not going to draw in all the square root symbols. It makes it a lot neater if I leave the square root symbols off. But be looking for matching pairs of 3s, like you see here, or matching 5s, matching 2s, or matching 7s to get those same values out of the square root. Here's how it works. So on the, on the number 12, you're going to break the number 12 down into two numbers. Think about 4 and 3. You might have chosen 2 and 6. It does not matter which ones you pick. If you choose 4 and 3, you get a pair of 2s that come out of there. Now think of that as the square root of two. Oops, think of that as the square root of two times the square root of two times the square root of three. That those all three together will multiply to give you square root of twelve. But what we're looking for is pairs, like you see here. So when I have pairs, I can circle those pairs, and then take that, and that answer gets written on the outside of the square root symbol. This three has to stay on the inside of the square root symbol, like you see here. Okay. So when we write the final answer to this first question here, it's just going to turn into two times the square root of 3. That's all it is. That's how this works. So on this first question, the square root of 12 will turn into 2 square root of 3. Hopefully that wasn't too difficult. Again, you're looking for pairs in the factor tree that you can actually uh, circle and then bring to the outside of the radical. Whatever can't be circled stays on the inside. All right, let's try to think about the number 56 next. Uh, the two numbers I would think of when I think of 56 are 8 and 7. That may not be what came to your head at the first thing you thought about it, but maybe you thought 2 and 28, or 4 and 14 as possible other combinations. It does not matter what pair you choose. But from here, you're going to break apart the, the numbers that can keep breaking down. 7 is prime, so that won't go any further, but the 8 and the eight can break down into 4 and 2. The 4 can break down into 2 and 2. So now what I'm looking for is I'm looking for pairs. I see a pair of 2s, but unfortunately, these, this 2 and this 7 are leftovers. They did not get paired up with anything. The ones you pair up go on the outside of the square root symbol, what you cannot pair up gets put back on the inside. Now when I put a 2 and a 7 back on the inside, you multiply them back together and you get 14. The pair of 2s, though, that you could circle, that goes on the outside as just the value of 2. Just like the thinking was when you're back here looking at the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, that was a pair which became a 2 of an actual value on the outside of the square root symbols. All right, let's look at the And then so that answer, <clears throat> if you're going to write it in this reduced format, is 2 square root of 14. All right, look at our last one. Uh, we happen to have 72, which breaks apart into several different combinations. If you were going to try to divide it by 2, which a lot of kids will do that don't know their times tables as well, they might go 2 and 36. Just take out your calculator and start dividing by 2. You might also recognize it could be 3 and 24, 4 and 18, or possibly even 8 and 9. Let's just say I went with the route of going 2 and 36. Well, you know 2 is prime, but 36 can break down further. 36, let's break that down into, let's just say, 9 and 4, for example. Now, if I have 9 and 4, 9 breaks down into 3 and 3, there's a pair. The 4 breaks down into 2 and 2, there's a pair. So that's pretty good. So now I know I've got some pairs to go off to work with here. I've got a pair of 3s, and I've got a pair of 2s. And then this leftover 2 that didn't have anything to pair up with. So the ones you can circle, remember this again, whatever you can circle as a pair gets put on the outside. So this goes on the outside as a 3, this goes on the outside of the 2. And lastly, this little leftover that you see right here, this 2, goes in right here as just a 2 left over on the inside. 
But if I'm gonna put this all together, those two, three, the three and the two, they end up making a six. So the final answer is gonna be six square root of two. And then the final answer that I'm gonna write up here is six square root of two is the reduced format for the square root of 72. So when you're thinking about these different problems, uh, this one here just had a pair that you could bring on the outside and one had one thing on the inside. What made the second one special is you had two things that were left over. So when they got multiple leftovers, they get multiplied, put back on the out inside. And when you have multiple things that actually work out as pairs, they get multiplied together on the outside. That's basically how simplifying radicals works. Hopefully this video helps and good luck in your homework.